think I've always liked the idea of like escapism. Like I was introduced to The Hobbit, I think in fourth grade, I was reading like a lot of Star Wars novels, The Hobbit. Then obviously Harry Potter, because that is my generation. So like my mom starts reading that to me and then, you know, like second book, third book, like I'm reading them to myself. And you kind of grow up with all of these different worlds in your head and you kind of enjoy them and you want that to be real. I don't know, realistic art and portraiture and stuff, like that's cool and it's fun and like it's beautiful, but like wouldn't something else be cooler? Wouldn't fantasy be cooler? My name is Michelle Carter. I'm a tattoo artist and co-owner of 1001 Troubles, and we are out here in Warren, Rhode Island, the tiniest town in the tiniest state. So my art style is definitely inspired by goddesses, mythology, fantasy, knights, and then like classical paintings, which is what kind of got me into art. So like Alphonse Mucha, Art Nouveau, um, John William Waterhouse. So it's almost like this merge of many different inspirational um, pockets of my mind that kind of creates this tattoo style that is very illustrative, a little bit painterly, and definitely fueled by fantasy. If you like something like that's when you're gonna get the best product, when you're like passionate about it. And I just think it's so fun. You just, I don't know, you do anything for long enough. I've been tattooing for 10 years and you just wanna do something different. You just wanna try something new. You wanna merge different things and just see what happens. Uh, my path to tattooing is probably a bit different than a lot of the people in the industry. I didn't seek it out. I actually kind of pushed against it. Um, I was in college for illustration. I really wanted to do concept design or something along those lines. I wanted to paint. I wanted to be an artist. And I think that back then I had this strict idea of like, okay, like creating art, like it's romantic, it's emotional. But doing tattoos, all the people I knew at that moment in time, like they had kind of script, they had haggard tattoos. Like I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's, is that art? And I had to ask myself that question before I went to do an interview with um, the co-owner of 1001 Troubles, now Fred. Um, so that's kind of how we met. I met him in college. We were in a painting class together and I knew about him from some of the teachers and one of my teachers, uh, her name is Michelle also, and she really pushed me. She was like, I think this will be a good fit for you. I think he would be a good match for you as like, just like a friend, you know what I mean? Someone to teach you. Um, he's a good guy, give it a shot. And I was like, all right, like, I'm just gonna give this a shot. And I fell in love with it. I realized doing the interview, I was like, oh, like custom tattooing, like this is completely different. They're doing consults with people. They're creating pieces of artwork for them to wear around for the rest of their lives, which is so different than my anticipated thought of, oh, they're like picking, I don't know, words or flash off a wall and it's like dime a dozen tattooing, you know what I mean? There's so much more craft and so much more art that's out there in tattooing now than ever before. So when I was in college for illustration, one of my favorite um, teachers, they gave me this beautiful old book of Alphonse Mucha's work. And I never gave it back because I really liked it. And then like years went by, I was doing tattoos, you know, I was getting my feet under me because if you look at this artwork, it is complicated, it's complex. There are a lot of tiny lines, big lines, color work, color blends. So it wasn't something that I was gonna jump at right away. But one of my favorite clients, uh, she had asked me to do one of his works. And I was like, hell yeah, like, let's do that. And it was one of my favorite pieces and it was one of the pieces that like everyone who saw it, they were like, wow. That's really good, like you did a great job. Then like I start like looking at his work more, kind of like figuring out how to merge it into tattoos. And then I get, you know, you do one good work and you get more people asking like, hey, I saw this, I was in New Hampshire, I saw this, like I wanna get something done. So I did more Art Nouveau, more Alphonse Mocha pieces, and then I started to like merge. I got requests, like I said, for like lady knights, druids, uh, like female with a child, mother with baby. I just recently did like a female knight, like a mother knight, like holding a child. Like it's very like medieval looking stained glass window behind her. And then we're using elements of Art Nouveau, which is very line weight heavy, where you have like bold lines on the outside, like these really beautiful thin lines and lots of flow, lots of drapery, usually with like a female character in the forefront. If I had to pick a thing that I do love about Alphonse Mucha's work, 
it would be the flow, like the flow of the drapery of the female form, the softness of the color. I mean, I, I guess I really can't pick just one. When you're designing tattoos, flow is really important, especially when you're wrapping designs around the body, around the muscles. So you want things like that, like drapery is perfect for that. You want something to take the form of the body and accentuate that and like just travel the eye across the arm, across the back, wherever. I also really like that he used like fairly full figured women, which like for me and a lot of ladies out there <clears throat> is something that you want to see, you know what I mean? Like, and I tattoo a lot of women. And so it's cool for them to be like, oh, you know, like I want like a full figured lady, Art Nouveau style, kind of with my features, but like not exactly me. So there are a lot of elements about his work that I really love, but I, I think the, the flow and the line work and the color. It's so funny that I'm talking about it now because it's something I didn't realize until I looked back within a month's worth of my work. And I was like, oh, this is a common thread that I'm doing. And you don't even realize you're doing it. Like you don't even realize your style until you take a step back or someone else is saying to you, hey, I really love that you're doing this. I really love your style. And I'm like, oh, that's my style? Oh, interesting. <laughs> So my advice to like fresh tattoo artists who just got their license would be to start with the basics. Like start with like crispy lines, pulling pulling perfect lines and then build it up, but try everything. Try different styles, try traditional because each style is going to lend itself to a toolkit for your skills. You're going to learn how to like pack beautiful color with doing traditional. Maybe you want to do something illustrative or realistic later on, but like it's still going to require you to pack consistent color. I do feel like Instagram and all of these other like social media devices, they're so oversaturated that you need to stand out. Figure out what you want and then like either create your personal style build your toolkit to get to where you need to go, or just do walk-ins, I guess, all day. Um, <laughs> so I think the takeaway would be like, master the basics and don't be afraid to try new styles or something outside of your comfort zone, because it'll only lend yourself in the future. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified for when we upload a new video, hit that bell icon above. If you'd like to see more of Michelle's work, see the links in the description below. And special thanks to 1001 Troubles Tattoo Studio. Until then, see you in the next video.